Hello, wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello from my heart to yours. Welcome to Down Ballot. We do the show live every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, right here on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash echoplex media. I'm producer Dave, and you can find me damn near anywhere. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, the, the, the guy on a 10-year-old webcam that looks better than a lot of newer <laughs> webcams that we've been uh, having uh, people join us uh, via lately. What's up? How are you doing, Producer Dave? This is the Councilman. Um, you can find me sometimes nowadays at T-H-E underscore Councilman on Twitter. I apologize to my many minions, my all like 100 of my followers, <laughs> that I have not been out there as much as I'd like to be lately. Um, as uh, some of you may have heard, the good wife and I are going through um, quite a, a bit of a, a family uh, trauma right now. Our, our lovely little pooch, um, Josie, uh, is going to be crossing the Rainbow Bridge tomorrow. 
Um, and so uh, we've been you know, dealing with uh, all the, the last uh, vestiges of feeding her tons of steak and, and hanging out with her and, and doing uh, walks around the park. Um, so, and relishing our last moments with her. So I haven't been able to be out there or on this show as much as I'd like to. Um, and I've only just recently figured out that uh, the interwebs at our house was perfectly rectifiable if all I did was just unplug the device and plug the device back in. So, so really excited. Speaking of device, I am definitely getting the built-in microphone on your machine. Hello. That sounded a good thing. Let me see if I can sort that out on the settings. Audio source. Built-in default. Let's see. Did that change anything? Um, tap the mic. Nope. Okay. And now? No. Weird. Nothing at all now. But still the... Is the interface plugged in to the computer? The interface is plugged in. Uh, I'll try it again. Yep. It's riveting radio. How about now? Fuck yeah. Is that better? <laughs> that sounds like a microphone. Yeah. Hell yeah. Fixing oh, things no. in real time around here. Oh dear. Okay. Let's see here. Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, there no. we go. Everything Can works now? now. Okay. I need to be able to hear you, so give me one second. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay there we go i can hear you can you hear me yep holy fuck all right well excellent now usually, to, to get back to <laughs> usually when there's tech problems it takes fucking multiple minutes to fix not just one so this is not so bad thank you listener and viewer for staying tuned um as as we uh negotiate this mostly viewers since uh, if you're watching it's live and if you're listening it's more than likely on the podcast uh but thank you to all of you uh for your patience and i'm really excited to get back on tonight this is exactly where i need to be um talking about local derp with producer dave and talking about bananas and going <laughs> bananas so, so uh what's the first story reading. Leading off tonight as a story that you, you, sir, found, um, I'm absolutely loving. I must have been, like, passed out of sleep when this story came on the news. Um, I also don't watch ABC7 as much as I should, but uh, you can probably tell me more about it. It looks like uh, some folks uh, in a convenience store took matters into their, a Walgreens took matters into their own hands and decided to, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to do a little vigilante justice on some thieves. Yeah, I didn't watch it. I never watch anything. I just saw the title was like, uh, it was like, uh, what? loss prevention it just says bizarre uh theft turns into a food fight in san francisco walgreens so i was like this is the most down ballot story i've ever seen let's just roll it i love it we have this person that is uh taking everything from the counter what you're watching is a walgreens theft in action tuesday it's not what professional photographer Nicholas Stennett is used to capturing. Goes behind the counter and starts taking stuff. I think maybe some COVID tests, a tray of batteries, um, I think some, maybe some electronics. Several employees at the Outer Richmond store watch and wait for help to arrive, all while the suspect, with stunning calmness, fills up a large bag. I feel a little bad for the workers. At one point, another customer begins to record and has his cell phone smacked out of his hand. The customer then tries to intervene. And is blasted. <laughs> no. When the customer tries to fight back, no, 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 flinging more fruit at the suspect. <laughs> to throw back at him. Jim Rita is a former law enforcement officer from California and president of SRS Protection, which provides security to businesses and places of worship in five states. He says providing security in California is challenging. There's several states that we work in where the security officers are allowed to do their job. Back in the good old days, we'd be able to grab people and, and put them in cuffs and take them to the back and in the store. Yeah. Rita doesn't recommend bystanders confront a suspect in the act. We don't want the uh, the citizen to get hurt either mm -hmm. because and I know how frustrating it is. He says if video can be taken safely, like how Stennett did. If there's no gun involved, I mean... I'm not too scared of bananas and chips ahoy. It can only. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it raises a little bit of awareness and like helps some kind of prosecution, I think that'd be nice. In San Francisco, Dion Lim, ABC Seven News. Is that guy, with the, the guy with the beard may seem cool, but he's the reason everybody's rent went up in that neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, dude, bro, for sure. Tech, tech, dude, bro. Um, yeah, I've I've never seen anything like like that before. That's pretty exciting. Um, I mean. 
good on the the witnesses to you know not just take the banana to the head but like come back and throw the banana back right like throwing the grenade back at the the person that threw it at you good on them but geez man like take it easy on the chips ahoy uh i know those are you know uh air you know sealed packages and whatnot but you know you're gonna crush some really damn good cookies so i <clears throat> i have a uh, i have a few different takes if that guy would have been in there stealing bananas everybody should have left him alone because maybe the guy just had nothing to eat yeah and that's a major I, I corporation that, but he went behind the counter the like into the space where the employees are where like more valuable items are that are obviously not uh food yeah well i, I think it's obvious this this guy did not have any intention of um uh you know getting violent anyway um given that he's back there ripping shit off putting it in a bag and the you know employees on the phone obviously with the police you know there is a man here stealing our stuff right now and he's not really giving a shit that she's doing it he's just getting his stuff and, and getting out um and then it only improvises by taking the bananas that are just the, the most accessible thing to fling at the person who is is trying to accost him um so uh, yeah I, I figured just leave the guy alone um uh, no matter what he's stealing but definitely if he was just stealing bananas i'm sure he could just walk out of there with bananas if he wanted to hey no and security somebody, guard gonna take a if, if somebody Sorry, throws ahead. a banana at you up the ante, get something a little bit harder, a little more substantial, like an onion and throw it at them. A pomegranate, bro. A pomegranate. Um, <laughs> Apple. <maybe. laughs> the orange is only barely upping the ante because the orange is a little squishy. So I'd say go with the apple or the onion pomegranate, possibly don't throw yeah, Brussels the, sprouts. They may seem like they're a little bit hard, but they're just not going to, they're not going to do that. You're not going to have the, the effect you want with Brussels sprouts. Well, don't forget, and uh, you know, uh, citrus fruits are full of juice, right? So there's that extra heft, right? So it's kind of like throwing a water balloon at someone, only with a really hard uh, exterior that's not going to break. <laughs> and if things get really, if things get really bad, you could throw, you know, soup for my family at somebody. There you go. I mean, Walgreens has everything. Have you been to Walgreens lately? You can you can shop for anything you need as far as groceries at Walgreens, even produce. Apparently, I didn't realize that, but um, I'm sure you can get freeze dried. Uh, lettuce or something some sort of vegetable there or some like those those veggie sticks right the puff veggie sticks that's vegetable Ooh, a pineapple a pineapple is a good one if you if you can get a good grip on that pineapple that's that's a that's a good one. Oh, it's got the spikes too that <laughs> sh the the shell oh man that would be painful it's like the shrapnel of fruit <laughs> <laughs> now now pineapple chunks not so exciting it's uh, sort of sort of like the brussels sprouts of, of fruit as far as throwing them at people projectiles unfortunately uh, if you're at a cupcake shop throwing a cupcake at somebody isn't going to do anything uh hey some of those artisanal cupcakes are really dense deliberately like those sourdough cupcakes or whatever the fancy schmancy ones so you never know um all right well don't overbake your cupcakes and definitely watch out for flying bananas next time you're at walgreens <laughs> um go straight to go straight to the prescription aisle get your stuff and get out of there um <laughs> And for as for me, the only thing I ever go to Walgreens for are those five packs of Bic lighters. Um, and I don't even smoke cigarettes anymore. I just go through lighters that I smoke that much weed. <laughs> so, so I go through like a lighter a day. So I, I go to get those five packs um, and they, they, they're they good good and inexpensive still and they last a long time. So thank you, Walgreens, for having those available. But it looked like that's what that guy was ripping off. So that's exactly where I would have gone, frankly. If you were a thief. If I was a thief and if I was in a hurry. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you should be in the pharmacy, right? Like ripping off the, all the Oxycontin and, and whatnot that's back there, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, the, really pharma maybe, maybe, maybe the pharmacist there is known to throw hands. Well, they probably have weapons uh, back there, I'm, I'm guessing. Like one, it's one actually, of those devices that like... It's, it's locked, too. It's not that easy to get back there. True. The true access is strictly truth. controlled for you know right. various reasons. Right. Windows and, and doors and all that stuff. And the drive through especially. Um, well... Uh, again, be careful. Watch out for flying produce wherever you go, but especially at Walgreens. That's a PSA from down ballot. Moving right along. Uh, do you want to go to winners and losers? Yep. This is where nobody wins. And if somebody wins, it wasn't who you were rooting for anyway. Well, nobody's winning right now. If you need gas for your gas guzzling vehicle to drive it around for whatever reason you do that for anymore. Um, but anyway, this is a story about how gas prices are really high because Ukraine. And I like your commentary here you're like people are driving their gas guzzler all the way across town to save a few cents on gasoline you 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 will hear it it's it's pretty hilarious to to, <laughs> to the, the complete disconnect in people's heads is unbelievable no i was reading something about that like the best place to get gas if you're just going to get gas generally is the place closest to you because you're using the least amount of fuel to get there you end Correct. up coming out ahead that way absolutely i i i can't say that i go to the nearest gas station to my home every time but what i do do is I notice I need gas, I pull over at the nearest gas station and I fill it up. That's also 
a lesson from having run out of gas multiple times with my wife in the car, and that's just not cool. Happy, happy wife. Happy I, wife. I really like the good wife, but I do not want to be with her. The car runs out of gas. Especially in the San Gabriel Mountains in summertime? Oh, no. no. Yeah, no. No. We couldn't even walk anywhere to anywhere like cool. We were stuck in the car. It was bad. Luckily, we had a friend as a buffer, but she probably wanted to kill herself. So here's the local story. This is from NBC Bay Area News. This is about um, people driving their SUVs across town to save a few cents on gas. We've seen Ian that Costco and Safeway typically have the lowest prices on gas for its members. It is 4.82 at this Costco in Santa Clara, but people say it is still well worth the wait to get that price. It's one of the lowest prices we found in the South Bay. Martin Rios drove from South to North San Jose for it, sitting in line for 15 minutes with other Costco members. And I'm not even driving my car just just because of the gas. I've been I've been driving my mom's car for the last like what two weeks because it gets better it's gas. Mileage. Way yeah, it's like it gets be- way better gas mileage because I don't have, have to put the gas in it. <laughs> exactly. That was my sh- I, I I I like got rid of my last car when i was like 23 but that was always the trick when i was out of gas i was like hey can i, can I borrow your car your car is a little bit nicer my dad was like yeah it's because my car's nicer he's like there's no gas in your car is there and i'd be right. like no and he'd be like leave your keys take my car you're paying it forward dad paying it forward that's all i can it's say saving me a lot of money even lower most stop on camden there was a steady line of cars taking 10 to 15 minutes to fill up Shelly Mackey says she'll do what it takes. She drives a Ford Excursion. At the moment, uh, stopping you at, a, well, this was last week, stopping you at $100, yeah. which is only 23 gallons. <laughs> this has got a 46 gallon tank. The last week has been the fastest rising gas prices I've seen in the 20 plus years I've been covering gasoline. Severin Borenstein is the faculty director at the Energy Institute at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. With the U.S. and Europe inching closer to banning Russian oil imports, he says the U.S. can find alternative suppliers because we don't buy that much from Russia. If we really are able to hobble their ability to sell oil, the good news is that will make it much more difficult for them to continue the war they're waging against Ukraine. The bad news is that will raise the price of crude oil which will raise our price of gasoline even further. He also says for every dollar added to the price of a barrel of crude oil, it adds another 2.5 cents at the pump. And it's too early to tell when that might level off. In the last month and a half, I put like $20 more in gas. You know, it's outrageous, man. It's too much. In the South Bay, Ian Cole, NBC, Bay Area News. I have, um, a, I have a bit of interesting information for these people. What's, what's that? You could set your watch by the light rail. It's always on time. And gas could be $15 a gallon and the fucking train would still be empty here. <laughs> right. Get, get your and own it, damn and train. It would, and it would still be cheaper too. Even if they are charging a fare, which they fucking shouldn't have to. Right. Um, yeah. Get on a goddamn train, folks. Like seriously, if I was, I, look, I'm lucky and privileged enough to not have to commute. Right. I actually have a small footprint because this is my office. My office is about 10 feet away from my bedroom. Uh, and even closer to the bathroom, which is a good thing on nights like tonight. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm luck- one of the lucky ones, but yeah, if I was commuting, I would absolutely be, uh, using the flash pass, uh, and the, <laughs> the, uh, well, sorry, the, the, um, clipper I'm getting it all of a sudden clipper. Thank you. My clipper card, which I have. Thank you very much. Um, uh, mostly for ball games at this point, but yeah, I'd be using the he- the fuck out of that shit. So get out of your cars, get out of your 43 gallon ford excursion what do you need that in the city for you don't like are you, are you going off-roading okay but like you don't need that in the city well it's not what an is, off-road vehicle all it is is like a it's like a van basically that yeah, just it's like it, a bigger less efficient probably less spacious version of a van i mean and, and i also okay and i also understand okay maybe you're using it for your vocation right you have an enormous truck you need to be able to move shit around because you're in your know, contractor or whatever interior decorator you need to put couches in the back whatever that's cool. I understand, but like, that didn't look like that was the situation there. And yeah, just just get out of your gas guzzler. That's that's an idea. If everyone's pissed about five ninety nine for gas, Chevron is always the highest. By the way, just in case anyone was wondering, five ninety nine for gas. Get out of your car and drop a couple bucks on the light rail, and you know it's a nice leisurely ride, right? But you know, get on, ride a bike. Oh yeah, fucking a! Uh, spend a little money, get a nice. You can get a nice fancy bike, even right. Doesn't have to be a 
any in a jalopy, right? You can get a nice Pee Wee Herman bike and <laughs> and use that and ride around in style, right? A trike even get like one of those reclining trikes. Those are really really comfortable. So if you figure anyway. a hundred bucks to fill your tank up, a really nice bike is like ten fill ups. Right. I mean, come on. I fill, I filled up the. I'll admit this. The good wife has a uh, her portion of our two automobile household is a sort of mid-sized SUV, <laughs> um, which I don't like to drive very much because it does blow a lot of gas. Um, but uh, yeah, it cost, I, I filled it up the, the other day. It cost about 70 bucks, I think, total. So I, I love the lady with like, well, they're only giving, they're giving you a hundred dollar cap. It's like, Jesus Christ, how big is your tank? Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's getting pricey out there. And that was at Rotten Robbie, which is a decent local business that tends to have pretty decently priced gas if you're looking for it. So our next story is about Santa Clara County. I believe it was, if not the last county in the nation to lift lift the mask mandate, it was among the last counties in the nation to lift the among mask the last mandate. in the state. Yeah, among the last in the state for sure, and the, and definitely the last in the Bay Area. Um, but that's it's all on brand for Sarah Cody. First, we're moving you forward as masks are finally coming off in Santa Clara County, the last California county that had that mandate in place. Yeah, the public health director says that because the country's COVID met metrics the way they are, masks are now recommended, not required. Today in the Bay, it's Chris Sanchez. She's joining us live from Sunnyvale, where workouts might seem a little bit easier for a few people on the treadmill this morning, Chris. Uh, well, I don't know how many weights you're going to put on, but I will say that breathing might be a little bit easier because the mask mandate is now over here in Santa Clara County. And these folks here, at I know they're just trying to have a little fun with it, but the mask doesn't actually make it hard to breathe. No, I mean, uh, yeah, not if you've actually worn one. <laughs> FC gym in Sunnyvale. They've been huffing and puffing through their workouts for a long time now. Today, they can breathe just a little bit easier. Now, effective today, as you said, Santa Clara County will align with the state and the CDC recommending masks indoors, but not requiring them. That is for everyone, not just for vaccinated people. And that's because the county met its three masking metrics, including a vaccination rate of at least 80% among eligible people, seven straight days of 550 Cases or fewer and stable hospitalization levels. The gym owner says folks seem ready. We've had a lot of questions the last few days asking, you know, when's that happening? What's, um, what can we do for that? And so we're very excited to say, come in, get your workout in, take your mask off. You feel ready to do that. Now she said they are going to support people if they want to leave their masks on. That's okay too. But I did do some unscientific polling on Twitter. People are about <laughs> split on unmasking. On Instagram, the majority of people say they are ready to take them off. You can still weigh in in that conversation on Facebook and also there. Now the state will require masking for at least two more weeks in K through 12 schools and childcare facilities, in healthcare settings, on public transportation, homeless shelters, and correctional institutions, and a UCSF infectious disease expert says you want to keep those masks handy in case you find yourself in a setting that feels a little bit risky. Now remember, private businesses can set their own rules so they can still require masking if they want. In fact, I got a little communication from my old gym saying that they were still going to require proof of vaccination. So you'll still have to check where you're going. But otherwise, the main rule, the overlying uh, rule of the land is that you don't have to mask up indoors if you don't want to. I don't know. A gym, a gym is one of like the probably the worst places to like lift the lift the mask thing immediately. Yeah, I would I would almost put them on the list with all the other places that were on there because they are high. You know, most of them are you know, high spread potential locations, venues, occupations. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a gym rat. I don't go to the gym. I've never been in a gym uh, for, with the purpose of exercising in my entire life. <laughs> um, so I don't. I guess that one time that the good wife talked me into it, but it was not fun. I, I yeah, not fun anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really sympathize too much. Like you can figure out another way to work out if, if you're really that, um, concerned about it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want people blowing all their sweaty breath on me anyway in the first place. So I'd probably be avoiding the gym at this point and for, <laughs> for a long time. I went out. I went out for like a beer in the afternoon yesterday and I didn't wear my mask, but like at the store, like I'm probably going to wear my mask at Safeway probably until the end of the fucking world. Cause like, 
Like if I even if I just have a cold, I don't want to fucking blow my cold onto somebody else's rutabaga. Right. Like <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah. That's uh I'm I'm still feeling moderately uncomfortable just being out anywhere. Um maskless or not, frankly. Like it uh so it's it's gonna take a while for me to get more comfortable. But Oh, I'm good to I'm good to go. I'm like but that's like the problem is like Time let's party on. but like that's you know that's a problem because there's this this new variant i guess going around i don't know that much about it i just kind of heard that uh, new york city mm-hmm. is having um a bit of a spike right now again that's usually where it starts though is new york city and then it new goes york city or right here the center of everything yeah it goes from it springs from there so um well keep an eye out um but for a variety of reasons i have to sort of be, be as cautious as possible it was good to see you in person the other day albeit briefly yeah so. definitely definitely we'll uh, we'll grab some dinner or, or lunch or something sometime soon let's do it let's do some some bcb see yes <laughs> yes all right uh but in the, in the meantime let's move on to the next episode here um, but actually shout out i should have uh, given her the proper recognition it's dr sarah cody who's our county health officer not just sarah cody so and uh she's give- been through some fuck bullshit through all this yeah she's she has 100% earned that that title of Dr. Uh, badass Sarah Cody. So uh, definitely get to know her because, um, you know, she could have a future in this business. Uh, <laughs> all right. Moving right along. What's up next on our uh, docket here? I need to pull up our docket. Oh, uh, well. Probably help me know. It looks like uh, looks like uh, SF, SF City and County workers are going to uh, return to the office soon. Yeah. So speaking of going maskless in public, now it uh, looks like we're... Our public servants are going to be coming back to their offices so you can harass them at city hall now instead of going to their houses <laughs> that's fucking great thanks this, for this that. happened in, this happened in los gatos this happened it happened at mayor licardo's house unfortunately multiple times around the world deaths from the pandemic now surpass six million people and the u.s accounts for about one-sixth of that number today a national memorial will be held to remember the lives lost during the pandemic as covid cases continue to drop finally this morning we are all oh, are they going to show the bat shits who showed up and did little fucking little things for the people they claim were killed by the vaccine i hope they don't give those people any fucking air time no oh, i don't know let's find out the return to the workplace across the bay area today in the bay sierra johnson live in san francisco sierra another sign that things are inching toward normal there starting today Good morning, Chris. Yeah, it's hard to believe that it was nearly two years ago that COVID really brought the world to a halt. That includes the Bay Area. A lot of folks uh, working from home, but starting today, those city and county employees of San Francisco will make their way back to the office. It's been a long time coming, so you're going to see a lot more folks there in some of the areas, specifically downtown uh, San Francisco. This is all part of the Welcome Back to SF Pledge. Uh, This is part of the mayor's program according to a statement from the mayor's office the welcome back to sf pledge signifies a critical milestone in the resumption of economic activity Uh, several of the city's largest companies have also pledged to bring workers back to the office this month and some other communities are also welcoming folks back to their offices starting today vallejo city hall will reopen to the public their new hours monday through thursday nine to three Uh, masks are required and the capacity there will be limited to just 10 folks in the lobby at a time. Some changes also coming for those in Hayward starting today. Those who are fully vaccinated will no longer need to wear a mask inside of City of Hayward facilities. But with all of this progress we're making, uh, many weren't so lucky and were unable to beat COVID. The nonprofit marked by COVID has selected today as COVID Memorial Day. The organization is working to create a federally recognized Memorial Day for the Americans who died from coronavirus. The co-founder of this organization lives right here in San Francisco and lost her father to the virus. Take a listen as to why she explains this day is so important as she works to heal. We weren't able to hold a, a proper funeral. Our goodbyes were stolen from us. And while this doesn't bring back our loved ones, it is an opportunity to, um, you know, start to process. And that organization will hold a remembrance ceremony today at five o'clock. That ceremony will be virtual. We're live in San Francisco, Sierra Johnson for today in the Bay. Chris. Uh, so rough. 
it wasn't the San Francisco one. I forget which one. I think it might have been like up in the East Bay, like Contra Costa County somewhere where anti-vaxxers showed up and were putting mm-hmm. up little graves for the people they claimed had died from the vaccine <laughs> like in the middle of these, this, this like, you know, remembrance thing. Oh, God. I want to say it was in yeah. Concord or somewhere like that. Uh, yeah, this is a little diff, slightly different, but um, yeah, no, I, that's just awful. I, I do remember seeing that. Um, so that, that story got a little somber <laughs> towards the end, but in terms of uh, public servants and uh, it, it's, it, it's, and people coming back and mask mandates being lifted and vaccine mandates changing and testing mandates changing, it just seems to me that uh, it's just all very haphazard and every city and every municipality has been left to fend for themselves and figure out what they want to do within the guidelines of like whatever the next higher authority is. And I just don't understand why, you know, someone just doesn't have the balls to reach. If we're going to confront this as a nation, as a glo- as a world, right. As a, a, a global culture, there's got, there, someone has to just create a standard and stick with it. And everyone seems to be wanting to cover their ass because everyone's so pit. So many folks are pissed about having, you know, been locked up and masked up for, two years now um and they're just trying to save their political ass it seems like whether it's the cdc or the president or you know our our local health officials everyone's just trying to cya and i think we're all getting the shaft because no one's just being straight with us and telling us what you know what should be the standard what is the standard well and i think that's why people are confused and that's it's giving an opportunity for the folks like those folks with the you know, the mock grave sites for the vaccine victims, um, you know, it's giving them more fodder, right? The more confused the power structure seems, right? They can come in and say, they see, they don't even know what they're talking about. But that's going to be the case as something develops this whole time. Nobody's yeah. going to know a hundred percent what the fuck they're talking about. And like, right. <clears throat> some people are like, and we won't spend too much time on this, but conspiracy theorists have never like tried to manage a group of people. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like sure, they've yeah. clearly never tried to manage like six to eight people. And because they, right. they believe that like, they believe that like all of this is being done on purpose or whatever. Like on one hand, right. they're like, Oh, the people are incompetent. They don't know what they're doing, but also they're trying to take your freedom. And it's like, well, if they're incompetent and they don't know what they're doing, what better group of people to be trying to take your freedom? Cause they suck at it. Right. But, you know, it's like, you know, I guess it's, you know, I don't have a background in the sciences, but all three of the other members of my immediate family do. And I understand that maybe not just from them, just from being somewhat scientifically literate or dealing with conspiracy theorists for a long time, that things are never as certain as we would like them to be, especially in like developing situations. You know, you can go all, sure. the, all the way back to nine eleven truth movement, like there were anomalies in the way that uh, the news was covering the 9-11 event and they weren't lying. They were just operating on limited m- information and sometimes speculating and, you know, whatever yeah. they were speculating, they got it wrong. And it was just, you know, you, if you go back through something and go anomaly hunting, you're always going to find anomalies. I bet an anomaly happened to me today that I didn't even fucking notice. All right. Well, that's, that's a great point. I think in that regard, you know, every community is being allowed to do what they think is best for their community, right? So in, in a way, it's, it is sort of part of the beast here in, in America where we have so many divergent communities and different communities, right? No matter where you are um, or where you're coming from, um, different perspectives and cultures and all of that. Um, so yeah, I, maybe you're right. Maybe, we should, maybe it is better to have um, everyone sort of figure out their own shit um, and not hopefully not bother other people. But the problem just then becomes, you know, we have so much commerce going on, right? People travel and people moving from place to place all the time. And we are in a global culture. So how can we ensure the safety of all, right? While allowing communities to basically police themselves. You know, it would be nice if this was one of those things where you could have different rules and regulations in the city and then different regulations for people out a little ways. But the problem is a virus don't care. A virus will spread more quickly in the city, but then those people in the city don't, never leave the city and people who aren't in the city don't never go to the city. And so mm-hmm. it's, you know, you can't really do it that way. And you know, it's just a big mess. And one other thing it I've is. been, I've been like arguing with people and they're just like not hearing it. And people are like, Oh, you know, we had all these lockdowns and I'm like, you know, I'm like, that's, I think that language is a bit dramatic for like County health officials asking you to stay home whenever possible and to go to the mm-hmm. store, you know, maybe go to buy more stuff that and go to the store less frequently and like, don't go to the bar. I'm like, 
you know, have you ever met anybody who's been in prison? They can tell you what the fuck a lockdown is. <laughs> like being asked to stay home or just go for a jog or just go for a bike ride. Or if you like to drive, just go for a drive instead of going to the club or going to brunch with your friends. That's not really a lockdown. It's like a, like a minor inconvenience and a, a set of suggestions for ways to, you know, <clears throat> slow the spread of the virus. So just the, the term lockdown is like super loaded and highly, highly dramatic, especially considering how like most places in the United States handled it, you know? Yeah, very much so. I, th- well, I mean, I think the, the sanctimony over all these quote unquote mandates in the first place, um, most of them aren't really actually mandates. It's just saying, look, if you want to do X, Y, Z, if you want to go to X, Y, Z place, if you want to work in X, Y, Z, you know, situation or environment, you have to do X, right? Which is and every business is free, right? Just like it's your right. If it's your house and someone's coming into your house, you can tell them, you know, you need to wear a mask or you don't need to wear a mask or you need to take off your shoes, right? That's your choice. And if they don't want to come in your house because they don't want to take off their shoes, that's their choice, right? No one's mandating anything. It doesn't mean you can't go into any houses, just not my house if you don't take off your shoes, right? Um, so similar, like the no shoot, no, no shoes, no service, right? It's exactly the same thing, right? If a business wants to say you can't come in, they're not infringing your constitutional right to get to get a coffee, right? You can go to any coffee shop you want that's going to let you in there without a shirt on. Um, you just don't have to get it at Starbucks. Right. So there's, there's nothing unconstitutional about that because you're respecting business owner and their right and those employees rights to be safe as well, too. Right. And like, I mean, a business like the no shoes thing is just almost always insurance. Like the business owner don't give a fuck if you're wearing shoes or not. But if you're not wearing shoes, you're likely, you you know, you you hurt your foot. And now the business owner is on the hook for fucking something falling on your foot. As long as you're paying, I'm sure it's fine. Right. So we got one last story in winners and losers. This is about um, a desalinization plant. And this is always a bad idea because electricity. Correct. As the pressure on California's water supply begins to jump this summer, at least one community could begin the process of producing their own. The California Coastal Commission is set to vote later this spring on what would be the state's second major coastal desalination plant in Huntington Beach. Glenn Farrell is with the industry group Cal Sal, which supports the project. I think folks are starting to recognize that there are uncertain sources of supply. You know, that the water supplies and our precipitation, our snowpack is becoming less and less reliable and less and less certain. And uh, it's time to start exploring alternative supply development. The plant is being developed by Poseidon Water, which fully opened the largest ocean desalination plant in North America in the San Diego area in 2015. Since that time, the Carlsbad facility has grown in capacity. It represents 10% of the San Diego region's water supply mm-hmm. on an annual basis. So um, importantly for them, it, it provides the reliability that they need. But the licensing process for Huntington Beach has stretched on for more than a decade. Concerns have ranged from potential impact on sensitive marine life to the cost of the facility itself, an estimated $1.4 billion. Heather Cooley is director of research at the Pacific Institute in Oakland. Our research finds that seawater desalination remains among the most expensive water supply option, that California communities still have cheaper options. Uh, water conservation and efficiency, for example. Several weeks ago, the company signed a non-binding agreement to address another criticism, the project's carbon footprint. It's the result of the energy required for the desalination process. In the agreement, Poseidon pledges to work towards using 100% renewable energy. I think renewables would be a better strategy, of course, than than using electricity from, from the grid, and which includes some fossil fuels. I think an even better strategy, though, is to avoid that energy use in the the first place. Supporters argue the costs and technical challenges are just part of the price California will have to pay moving forward in the face of climate change and worsening drought cycles. There's no low-hanging fruit. There's there's no cheap water supplies that are sitting out there that water managers haven't scooped up a long, long time ago. The next increment of water supply is expensive. Mike Nico, ABC7 News. 
So if they do it all with solar, I guess that's fine. But they said that like in San Diego, they have the biggest one in the like North America and it's only making 10% of the water there. And San Diego is not a small spot, but it's not a major metro area like fucking like or, like the L.A. area where Huntington Beach is, right? It's actually been, San Diego is pretty substantial. It's one of the top uh, 10 cities in the in the nation. Um, it's right, but it isn't. But, but then. It isn't like a Los Angeles where you leave Los Angeles and now you're just in another city that just looks like an, like Los Angeles. Oh, and then yeah. you keep going. You're in yeah. another city where you think you're still in L.A. Then you're in it's another city where you think you're still in L.A. Yeah, it's getting it's definitely getting there. But yes, you're in that regard. Correct. Um, but yeah, that's even then, you know, the amount that you're expending, you know, and they have the what it takes to create the energy that it takes to run that plant. You know, for for that money, I'm sure there are other. I'm sure there are better solutions. And um, there's recycled water. There's all sorts of other solutions um, for this that don't involve taking salt out of water that is salty because <laughs> it's in the ocean. Um, we've been doing that here. I, but there were salt flats, you know, or salt salt uh, water ponds up on the bay, right? So they've been doing that here for a long time. I think they still do. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a practice we need to start moving beyond. Just like putting five ninety nine to a gallon gas in your car. Yeah, it's, oh. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know what the solution is going to be to the water thing. Cause there's a couple things going on here as, as climate change starts to affect more people. I think people are going to be fleeing rural areas for the city. Um, mm. just because some of these rural areas are going to fucking dry out and they don't mm. have like the kind of infrastructure or the kind of money to maybe find alternative sources of, uh, water, but then the city's going to be more dense. The water systems in the cities or the urban areas or whatever are going to then be you know they're going to have more pressure on them as more people come and actually the water pressure might drop as a result of the population pressure so i don't know i don't i don't know you know i don't know what you know for whatever reason a lot of people like to live in these places where it just don't rain that much like a lot of people in la and it don't rain much in la maybe that's why they want to be there but that you know it's like kind of short-sighted <laughs> It is. I mean, we're we're uh, we're facing a reckoning. Is what's what it's coming down to. I mean, I, when it comes to climate change, right? We're. I, I do not see. I do. I'm sorry. I'll be a cynic. Um, I do not see the political will to move, make significant enough change that we're not going to see significant, you know, temperature increase, melting of the polar ice caps, rising of sea levels, which is already happening, right? And heat waves, fire, famine, starting around the equator. And just moving out, right? And who live in who live along the equator already? The most impoverished, you know, po poverty stricken, you know, di um, disenfranchised, uh, disregarded people in the world, right? And they're going to suddenly be having a mass exodus of those folks from the equator, both ways, right? And sooner or later, this caravan that you know our our friends on the right and Trump was so, um, you know, hell bent on. I'm promoting to scare the living shit out of everyone, right? All the, the bitty white people in Texas. Um, there will actually be a caravan. It'll be a caravan of millions of people who are fleeing these areas and where they can no longer exist because humans won't be able to subsist in these areas much longer. Um, and it, when it comes to places like LA, which was a desert uh, and only became LA because for a reason, right? Money, commerce, uh, the film industry, 330 plus days of sun a year. They didn't have, you know, studio uh, studio lights, right? And inter interior studios at the time in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. So the industry thrived because in LA because there was light. Um, and that's pretty much how, how you got LA. Las Vegas, gambling, right? A, a stopover. There would be no Las Vegas there. There's, there's no reason to build a city there other than to have a stopover on a freeway where people can spend a lot of money. So uh, for not a lot in return. Um so anyway, we've built around an unsustainable culture for way too long, um, particularly in California and the West Coast. Um, and we're going to have a reckoning very, very soon. And it's going to suck for a lot of people. <laughs> um, and hope uh, my only hope right now, frankly, is that it doesn't impact myself or maybe the generation after me um, to the point where it's going to really traumatically cha disrupt our lives. But it's going to happen pretty soon. Um, Basically, you're... Yeah. you're you're, the best you can hope for on all this is that you're push, pushing up daisies by the time the shit hits the fan. And that's fucking selfish, but uh, that's an it understandable, is. that's an understandable position to take. Cause what else are you going to do? You know, you recycle, you drive efficient cars, you do what you can, you know? 
all I can do. Yeah, I do. Th- I do all those things, right? And if we all did those things, then you know things would be different. But there's only so much I can tell other. I can encourage other people to do them, right? Um, and frankly, the, when it comes down to it, producer Dave, you and I live in an area where we're a little bit ahead of the curve, and even then, right, we could be doing so much more, right? Um, we have broad adoption of recycle recyclables. We don't. We're getting there on compostables, um, and we have a we have a recycled water system that already provides water, potable water, to a large. A portion of our population here whether they know it or not the poop water is coming to you um so we're doing well here um better than most but it's we're like a small pinpoint on the big dot of the earth right and there's only so much that we can be done until the powers that be whether we elect them or not as in other countries or here even sometimes um <laughs> uh decide to take fucking action and do something about it but i haven't seen it i just haven't it's been it's been my whole life. I think I've heard people talking about we need to take action on climate change. We need to take it seriously. It's like okay, Al Gore is the only person I've seen taking it seriously at that level, and unfortunately, and then, he got screwed and made fun of. Correct. Yeah, because yeah, like they knows, lied about him. Just real quick, he he yeah. took credit for the internet by taking credit for funding the pro- for like being the a internet. champion for the funding for the project that laid the backbone down, and everybody's like, oh, you invented the internet. And it's like, yeah. oh, dude, come on. Yeah. But I, you know, about a lot of fossil fuel money went, probably went into that, uh, went into that campaign to like smear the guy and say he invented, he say he claimed he invented the internet. I probably don't even really agree with his politics that much. I'm probably to his left, but he would have been, he, he seemed to have won that election and he would have been a much better choice in my never humble opinion. He didn't 100% inspire me. I'll admit it that year. Um, but yeah, absolutely would have been a much better choice. And he did win the popular vote and, Reminder to fucking everybody. The main reason you vote for president is the fucking Supreme Court. Okay. Oh, and arguably when the Supreme Court, there was that weird Brooks Brothers riot where they like a bunch of dudes in fucking khakis and polos were like banging on the windows of a place trying to get them to stop counting votes. And it should not have, it should not have come down to a Supreme Court decision anyway, but it did. And it was a one vote margin. Fucking elections matter. And now we've got like, we're, we're, the left, if you want to call it the left, like basically the ladies on the on the Supreme Court, were behind. Like we're, it's six to three on any given vote already for the assholes. And that you got to vote, folks. You got to vote in presidential elections. It's just it's way too important. But now we're stuck with that for many years because the people that have been appointed are like fifty years old, so they're probably going to last at least another thirty, forty. It's a lifetime appointment. So, and oh, uh, and we're, the, we're, the most fucked up part about it, well, not the most fucked up part. The most strangest part is the person everybody thought was the arch conservative. Uh, Chief Justice Roberts is more Roberts. likely to break with the uh, liberal ju- judges, right. like I'm, I'm because the other late, people actually. are out of their <laughs> fucking minds or whatever. Right. right. Even if he's, he's just be- doing it for his own personal legacy to like, like it, at least, like at least that's there, you know. But well, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, we- it's it's big. It's big. It's fucked up. You you got to vote, and um, I yeah. I think I agree with you. I think the fucking the ship already sailed on climate change, and I think that yeah. um unfortunately you know after we're gone we're going to start seeing we're going to see massive war we're going to see fucking countries like genociding people at the border and shit it's going to yes. be fucked up yes because who lives in the who lives in the climate the more uh temperate you know, warm temperate climes right the white fucking people, rich people right like even in the rich white even people. in the even in the south even in the southern hemisphere it's like brazil which is a richer country than the other country and lighter skin by the way brazilians Argentinians, and, they're and, not like they're not burned by the sun they're lighter like Aus- people. australia you know more temperate climate mm-hmm. yeah i'm just i i fear for the generations that have to deal with it now granted I'm also a believer. I love science fiction. I love dystopian theory. I also love sort of utopian theory as well. I'm also not averse to thinking that you know, I'm also a study of a student of history, mass extinctions, right? I don't think that a reckoning is is entirely not what we need, right? If, if humanity wants to survive, I think we could use a reckoning and we could use a thinning out and we could use a reassessment of what we're doing. And if it has to come through that you know, mode, then so be it. Cause it looks like that's the way it's going to have to go. We could do it now with this global economy. We could, we could change the world. We could shift, but we're not, it doesn't seem like we're going to. So maybe the world's going to shift for us and we'll have to adjust. Well, the problem, and survive, I mean, and those who survive will have a lot of fun. The problem, the problem with that is, and I know that this isn't your position, but there are people who take that position that you took, but they're taking it from a position where they're uh, eugenicists. And because of the kinds of people that are most likely yeah. to die, do you know what I'm right. saying? Right. And it's, it's, and that's, uh, that's the, my, you want to talk about my fear? That's my fear. I would love to see 
the impoverished, like I said, the 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 you know the the whatever the Statue of Liberty says, the poor huddled masses, right? I would love to see them all rise up and slaughter all of us, <laughs> right, and <laughs> take and take back what we took from them. I would be happy with that. In they a, could in give a you and me a mulligan, right? Yeah, and I, I would hope that there would be like some sort of you know reckoning, like <laughs> with Jesus coming back, you know, to 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 you know judge everyone, right? We would be judged appropriately, I think, not on, by our actions, right? Not on the the color of our skin. I would hope. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm saying? I, I I would love. I would be happy knowing that would happen. But you're right; it'd probably be the other way around, and that would be just god awful. And we could end up with some sort of homogenistic white society um moving forward that that lives in the poles because it's too fucking hot to live <laughs> for any humans to live near and speaking near of tropics. which that ruffies album's coming out soon everybody check out everywhere's an island it's a song about global warming and incest oh but you can't you check go. it out you can only check it out here haha <laughs> it's not and even on our 24 hour stream so let's let's uh let's 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 let's, let's uh let's try to move it along here because we're uh, let's do that let's do that we're getting on in the long in the tooth tonight but I'm enjoying the conversation. Oh, me too. Let's let's go to get your shit together, De La Salle. Where is De La Salle? Uh, East Bay, uh, Northeast Bay. I'm forgetting what exact city conquered. Crap, I'm forgetting exactly which city in the East Bay, but it's Northeast Bay. Well, maybe they'll um, tell us in this this news hit. This is uh looks like uh some of the some of the soccer kids' parents were doing a racism. It might have been the kids, the students. Oh. But let's see the let's see the story. I assumed it was the parents. Right, you would hope. Involving one of the most high-profile high schools in the Bay Area. Accusations that fans shouted racist chants during soccer games at De La Salle High in Concord. NBC Concord. Bay Area's Sharon Katsuda reports from the De La Salle campus. This home video from last Tuesday's state regional... This is actually a really good shot right here. De La Salle ...shows how passionate parents got at the game. Look at that! Oh, great shot. That guy's a comrade. Do you see the red flag? Coach says yeah. it's what wasn't caught was on the video that has him upset. He claims De La Salle fans yelled racist comments at his student athletes during the game. Our players had uh, approached us afterward and told us that um, they were hearing comments from the stands on the De La Salle side from the student section. Um, things like, hey, Juan, you want a burrito? Hey, Juan, you know, hey, Edgar, you know speak english as well our parents during the game they had mentioned that they were hearing things from parents on the other side things like you know go back to mexico uh, you know they're not even speaking english kind of a thing a women's high school soccer team in fresno says they witnessed racist behavior at their recent state level game both claims are being investigated tonight de la salle issued a statement in part saying quote after nearly two dozen interviews thus far, we are unable to corroborate these allegations, but will continue to investigate this matter. If any individual with De La Salle High School made such comments, they will be held accountable. We neither condone or tolerate such unacceptable behavior. They should have led with the first part, you dumb fucks. The Sanger High School soccer coach says he hopes De La Salle will continue its investigations along with CIF to hold people accountable. In Concord, Sharon Katsuda, NBC Bay area news like even just on the messaging there why not just say the first part don't say we haven't found any evidence because this is unacceptable this is unacceptable for the parents unacceptable for our students if we you know, and then you go if we find out who's doing this we're going to take action against them they're not going to be allowed at the soccer games or any other sporting events in our stadium like it's Wouldn't so it easy to do that oh well, yeah it's the, the the easiest thing um is sometimes the hardest right apparently um but you're right uh, and this is this what exactly what you said was what nagged me uh, when I was in you know in the education sphere and having to be a shill for uh, for education administrators and the this just fear of saying the truth or just confronting the issue um, and this is nothing new like my I went to a Tony Catholic boys high school um, and we had an incident like this where uh, members of the football team uh, were. Uh, apparently conducting chants uh, that were not so cool about and around members of their own team in the locker room. Right. Um, so this was, and it became a thing. Um, it became a, a matter of protest, even among some of our student uh, student body. But it, even then that was now almost 30 years ago, more than 25 years ago. And only now is that same school going through the reckoning of, you know, DEI and and getting woke and and figuring their shit out right and and actually going through the process of engaging the community around these issues, um, so it takes 
time, especially in the Catholic high school community, um, as you might imagine, takes some time, but it's just, it's, it's sad to see that you, what, what you, that the path you lay out producer Dave isn't the one that is taken more often because you just have to confront it, own it. Right. Um, because if it happened, if it happened, if someone thinks it happened, it happened, um, in this kind of situation, especially if it's a parent, um, uh, or a student who is telling you what they heard and what they, uh, observed and experienced um you got to take it seriously and you got to nip it in the fucking butt but that they don't and they they let things unravel um so they let people they let news stories unravel they let their students go unpunished because they don't do a thorough enough investigation or they give them a slap on the wrist um or they're on the football team and they they can continue to have their wild sex parties yeah it's just it's it's it the, the messaging from a lot of these organizations is just really bad and it's super easy to just be like this is unacceptable uh we're mm-hmm. not sure what happened yet you know this is a new you know new news to us um we're mm-hmm. definitely looking into it and this is not how we want we don't want members of opposing teams to be treated this way this is a sport we're we're here to you know we're here to play the sport and if people mm-hmm. are if people in the stands or people on the field want to make it about something else then they can gtfo you know, yeah. <laughs> they go somewhere Absolutely. else with that shit, but nobody Absolutely. ever says that. And they're just, I think they're afraid of the teacher. Like right now too, the schools are afraid of the fucking parents and shit. Cause all that shit they've been seeing maybe at the school board meetings with the CRT and the mass and everything. But <clears throat> like this, this stuff, like, I don't know. It's just like, you could even just frame it in like some kind of sanctimonious shit about sportsmanship and do a better job than that statement did, you know? 100%. Absolutely. Just like it, why why equivocate at all in that statement anyway if you're through if you're seriously conducting an investigation you know about into it no evidence has been found like well okay fine but you're still conducting an investigation so you probably shouldn't say shit about whether or not you found any evidence or not you should just say this is unacceptable and if proven you know if the investigation proves that it did happen then there will be no place you know blah 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 like you said at this school for these students period um yeah why why not we'll find out someday um I guess I've never been, the only thing I can say is I've never been in that position. I've never been a school administrator, so I don't know, you know, what it's like, but, um, just, just my two cents and our two cents is observers. Yeah. Again, maybe, maybe there's reasons you don't do that, but you just go, this is unacceptable. Again, it's just so easy. You go, we want, when we welcome, when we welcome other teams here, we will treat them with respect. That's the policy of this school and people not following that policy will be ejected from our games and not allowed back. It could also be, you know, covering CYA. And the truth is we know exactly who this is and their parents or their family gave way too much money to this school for us to kick them out. So we're just not going to do anything about it. That's probably more a private school thing though. It is. Well, I think De La Salle is, uh, uh, I I didn't didn't know. I thought it was a public school. I want to say it's Catholic. If I'm wrong, absolutely. Uh, if anyone in the chat happens to know, please call me out. I think it is a private school, though. They do really well in athletics at the state level, in, in football and a variety of other sports. So I only assume that they're private these days because public schools are just challenged, unfortunately. Well, they're not able to recruit compete. like a private Correct. school can. Correct. As yeah. Well, it's, they it's, shouldn't be able to. It, it hasn't <laughs> always been that way. It hasn't always been that way locally, but it's, it's certainly the, the haves and the have-nots have gotten more distinct. So we're going to move on to the down ballot watch here. Our next story is uh, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors that just got recalled. Apparently, they're just going to fucking start firing everybody. Let's go clean house, I guess. This is all. The, this is all the teachers and the staff's fault. Oh no. New for you this morning, teachers, parents, and students in the San Francisco Unified School District. Well, they're getting some answers about layoffs. Preliminary layoff notices for hundreds of staff are expected to go out later this month amid the budget shortfall. Today in the Bay, Sierra Johnson, she's joining us now to break down those cuts. Sierra? Yes, good morning, Marcus. Last night, the San Francisco Unified School District's school board did vote to approve eliminating around 300 staff positions. Now, take a look at your screen. This is a list of those approved staff cuts. 151 teachers, counselors, as well as social workers, 51 top-level managers, and 62 other staff members. Now, those preliminary layoff notices are expected to be completed by March 15th, but a spokesperson for the the district says not every employee who received a notice will be laid off. That spokesperson says the district is also offering early retirement and resignation incentives with hopes of filling vacancies with existing staff members. So as the district has said throughout the
the process. They hope to see the number of proposed layoffs to decrease throughout the spring. Take a listen to District Board Vice President Jenny Lamb explain why the cuts are crucial for the district. As hard and difficult and painful this is, because the alternative is that there is going to be high risk with the state. And I'm not trying to be draconian or scare tactic. It's really before us. Um, the other piece, too, is if we want to talk about hard conversations, is that we're in our seventh year, probably likely going into our eighth year of declining enrollment with a portfolio of schools that is really beyond our means. And approving the staff cuts, that wasn't the only item on the agenda from last night's Board of Education meeting. Uh, some other outcomes from last night meeting, bonuses were approved for union teachers. So the union teachers, as well as those paraprofessionals, will receive two one-time bonuses of $2,000. Also, the daily rates for substitute teachers, as well as, um, excuse me, as well as paraeducators, that will also increase as a way to help better promote the higher rates of classroom coverage. So. A lot coming out of that meeting from last night. Again, March 15th, that is the day that those individuals will receive those preliminary layoff notices. We're live in San Francisco, Sierra Johnson for Today in the Bay. Uh -huh. so, okay. So if there's declining enrollment, like, I don't know, <clears throat> I feel like I feel like this could have been handled more gradually as enrollment declined, but I don't know how all this shit works. Um but why, why do you suppose there's declining enrollment in San Francisco schools, Councilman? Uh, well, there's they're not alone. Um, first of all, there's declining enrollment in, at least locally, in almost every public school district um, for a variety of reasons. Um, we live in a more urban area, very high, um, high rent area, too. So a lot of families who take advantage of, I, sorry, take advantage, who are... Uh, eligible for public school right or take advantage well, we're all eligible fuck it take advantage of public school um are moving out of urban areas or moving out of high price areas into more rural areas um and their kids are going to those schools no longer here those who can still afford to live here can also afford usually to pay for private school or to support uh, a uh in other ways a charter school which is kind of like a quasi public school that or private school that takes money from public schools We'll talk more about that at another time. Um, so uh, there are other there are other school systems that are uh, pulling kids away from our public school systems, and it's a real um, precipitous uh, cycle, right? So the more uh, you see uh, this exodus, the less kids are left in the system. That means the way that state the state funds education, at least in California, is per pupil, pretty much per pupil per day. So uh, that's why. Truancy is also a big problem, not just like kids enrolled in the system, but it's per pupil per day. And at the end of the year, you know, there's an average there and that's the kind of funding you get. Right. And they, and but districts also have to budget on a three year cycle and they have to prove to the state that they're going to be solvent three years from now. Right. Every year they have to do that. So yeah, the, so occasionally, um, I mean, every year, uh, employees get this notice, honestly, uh, with, with declining numbers and declining funding for the past so many years every year employees get this preliminary notice that yeah they might their position might be eliminated or they might be terminated um it's a requirement it's in the union contract they know it's most times they know it's coming um the only question is how many of those notices can be mitigated by like the, what they talked about transfers backfill early retirement buyouts things like that right they're all just it's just trying to save money but it's trying to save money on a ship that's kind of sinking the only thing that reverses that is when the economy tanks if the economy tanks again and the real estate market tanks again, you will see a massive influx back to cities and urban areas of these folks who will now again be able to afford it. There will also be a need for them and their their services. And you'll see an influx of those students back into our schools again. Um, also because so many people who can afford to send their kids to private school will lose money and be forced to put their kids back into a high quality public education, which you should be doing anyway. Um, it's free for fuck's sake. Uh, well, you already <laughs> paid for it. And it's just his quality, right? You're paying for it anyway. That's the thing. Your tax, what I would tell parents out there who sent their kids to private school was, look, I don't care what you think of our public school system, but you're paying for it regardless. Your taxes are paying for our public school system. So if you're not using it, that's great. You're paying, you're just paying for other kids to get educated. And if you're okay with that, then that's fine. That's a great social contract. But just think about that for a second. Except anyway, with, the way the funding, so with the way the funding works, aren't they, doesn't that money then get diverted to where a student actually is? Yes, um, but it doesn't, 
but it doesn't solve the problem of the uh, teacher, right, in this right. system who now doesn't have a job but needs a place to stay and can't necessarily move to where that kid went, right? Right. Um, right. Because they're, they're there to teach 30 kids, right? On California, it's a 32 max, right? Well, no, so that, that's what I meant, though, is that the money that they're spending their money and it's not even being used locally if right. the if the enrollment in the public schools down say oh just, sorry, we'll, just dollars, we'll just yeah. we'll just say the only two cities are san jose and san francisco and yeah. everybody's leaving san francisco with their kids to go to san jose and all the people in san francisco put their kids in private school then all those san francisco dollars go to san jose well the because actually, that's where all they, the kids are funny story they actually kind of, they kind of don't right it all gets pulled into a pot but then gets redistributed based on uh, property taxes and other factors in each area. So actually we are theoretically, we're paying for our own schools and each community is paying for its own schools. That's why, frankly, Palo Alto public schools have a lot more funding, say, than San Jose public schools or uh, Milpitas' public schools because they have a higher tax bracket and they end up getting uh, more money uh, uh, than, another, than the next district, right? And they also have a parcel tax that they've added on and asked the voters to approve that's you know infinitely higher than most other parcel taxes in the area so they have the largest to support the district and give them more money so yeah they have you know higher quality programs surprise surprise but yeah no it is actually portioned it's it's all kicked up to the state but it gets reapportioned um pretty much you know a, 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 a sufficient to whatever you know the property taxes and the values of the homes in your area are right so that's that's the unfortunate situation we're dealing so, with. So the more I follow up on this, the worse it gets. So let's move on to the next story. It's complicated as fuck, unfortunately. They, no, they, the more we, you make look, it complicated, the, so we can't fix it. The, the more, the more, the more. I'm just telling you, the further down that road we went, the worse it got. So, yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> as, sorry about that, city everyone. I, I, sorry about sorry about that. The, the little wonky uh, sidetrack there, but it's it's something. It's it just goes to show how complicated this sh they've made this formula and all and education funding and how much we have to like pull back and pull peel back the onion and tear it apart right uh to get to where we need to be um it's just that's they but it's done intentionally to serve the established system right the the complex okay enough about that shit let's well, we're move gonna, on we're, we're gonna, gonna skip on gonna skip to, we're gonna skip to and another thing all right well that's that's fine with me we're up um, against it it's no problem we can we can cover that other shit some other time um Anyway, uh, so first off on and another things, um, we've got the Peregrine Falcon from Cal that's missing. There was a mystery, a mystery of the of the missing Falcon, and I don't know anything about this story, so we're just going to roll it. Mostly imaginary storyline surrounding Annie the Falcon. Is any of it true? So this is what we've come up with. Basically, Annie has lived with her mate Grinnell on top of UC Berkeley's. Uh, Campanile. Hello. This has been to, since 2016. Huh? Huh? But then she disappeared for me. about a week and experts were really afraid that she was hurt, maybe even dead, maybe she'd abandoned her territory. But thankfully, Annie came back, stunning a lot of people. And we want to know, did she step out? What was going on? <laughs> Annie. Annie, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> the way she was looking at that camera. Joining us live is a person who spotted Annie back home, Dr. Sean Peterson. Thank you so much for joining us because, you know, we might need to be reeled back in because we have too many theories about what was going on with Annie. So I was just excited that she was back. I'm sure you were too when you spotted her. What was that moment like? Yeah, I was uh, sitting there working on my computer and I looked at the camera and I saw a bird sitting where Annie usually likes to perch. Um, and I zoomed in, and it was unmistakably her. And I let off a oh. expletives, oh my. which I'm not too, too uh, <laughs> proud to say. <laughs> and I uh, was glad that my three-year-old son was not around to learn them. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just kind of, I mean, I had pretty much given up almost all hope. So it was amazing to see her return. Oh. So where was well, this story is seven minutes long, so we got the gist. Yeah, I think so. I was I was hoping that she had just given or had the uh, eggs hatched, but it looks like that's old footage that they were just going to stock footage of the the falcon. That's kind of kind of a blue balls moment there for me, honestly. Um, all right. Well, why why not go out with a bang? <laughs> like literally, the board. This, um, this is my favorite story of the week. So a boulder was blocking Highway 50 through the Sierra Nevada mountains. And instead of doing any other thing, they just blew that shit up. Why not? 
All right, that is the dramatic scene near Lake Tahoe this morning. A boulder nice. blown up along Highway 50. That boulder was part of a rock slide that crashed down onto the highway at Echo Summit. This is what it looked like before the boulder was blown up. They're not mountain climbing. <laughs> That's the boulder. Oh, yeah, my they had to God. Work hard to move that thing. It blocked both lanes, so nobody was getting through in either direction. A driver discovered it around 6 o'clock last night. As of now, no word on when those lanes will reopen, but it is a lucky thing nobody was hurt yeah. a driver discovered it like can you imagine like witnessing that like okay maybe you don't get hurt but like witnessing that fall like right in front of you or behind you for that matter <clears throat> my goodness it looked That's like huge. it wasn't like on um <clears throat> i it was hard to tell but it looked like it wasn't like on a main interstate or whatever so i bet what happened is somebody came around the corner and had to slam on the brakes that's how they noticed it, it. Well, if it's on 50, it's a two, I mean, that's basically a two lane road down from the summit to Tahoe. Um, so, and at night, you know, there's not a whole lot of traffic, so it could be a, someone just ran, happened upon it, but wow, that was like a, that wasn't a boulder. That was like a piece of a mountain. Jesus Christ. Well, it was a satisfying explosion too. I like that. I always hate it when demolitions aren't satisfying, but it was definitely Red right tat tat boom. That was yeah. Cool. They, they, they dug deep enough and put enough kablamo in it, but that now, I mean, I understand it's more manageable now, but now they just have a bunch of small boulders, mm. also known as rocks. Well, it's going to take some time anyway. So um, they were having they were having fun though. Get, let 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 the emergency workers have some fun. It's been a rough couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Usually, yeah. like usually, like when we hear a story about it basically anywhere up there, it's a PG and E started a fire. So we'll be right. we'll be glad that this wasn't PG and E starting a fire, like a transformer blowing up, starting a fire, or whatever you know. Always got to be careful. Watch out for falling transformers. Watch out for falling boulders, everyone. And stay tuned for local love. Okay, you want to read us out? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thanks so much for joining us once again. Uh, to all the folks out in Twitchverse, thank you for your chat and for your for your views. Um, thank you for your subs. Please do that more often. Um, everyone downloading this, please share it with your friends. Let folks know if you're interested in local uh, news, local politics, local derp, and local music. Tune in on Tuesday nights starting at 7.30 Pacific right here on EcoplexMedia.com. And a quick shout out once again to Josie. Rest in power. And I hope you all stay safe, get vaxxed, wear a mask, and pants are optional. Have a pants off, dance off. Was uh, Audible Smoke. Locals. <laughs> Pick up my phone just to check and see who's calling Dress up real nice for the ladies at the bar And I'm driving in my car just to get to where they are Here at the local scene is where I plant my feet It's where I smoke my cigarette and I hold my drink I look at all my friends, they're all blazing greens Here at the front of the stage waiting for FTV Where are those guys who's standing next to me With a pipe in his hand ready to blaze for me About five minutes later we're all singing We now get the fuck up on stage and rock the scene yeah. We do what we want, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. We do what we want, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. Enjoy that band. I turn and head back to the bar for a refill, man, because you know where we are. We're headed out to the car To smoke another one what? And another one Woo! Now just when the magic starts kicking in Now here we left playing And you know it's time to head in Alright everybody now it's time to grab a new drink Spark it if you got it And then pass it to me yeah. We do what we want And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band We do what we want we want is to jam, so sit back and enjoy the band. Enjoy that band. Last up on the bill for the show tonight. It's down me dirty and five, so we're headed outside. Just park up.
another joint now who's got my light A stoner E, of course, shouldn't you be inside? I'm all up in this bitch being who I gotta be I'm fucked up like the US economy The truth is, is that I don't think logically Stoner E, take you on a psychedelic odyssey Now inside, motherfuckers is rocking me And outside, shit, we smoke a lot of broccoli Rocky the roller, you're the sexy girl, be jockin' me Ain't too drunk to fuck, but don't probably do it sloppily We do what we want, what we wanna do And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band Dance with the band and enjoy the band We do what we want, what we wanna do And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band So sit back and enjoy the band